last time on all of Algebra 1 Explained in 5 Minutes, we took a look at variables, equations, order of operations, inequalities, and systems of equations. And now, 1Red2Blue4 two blue four presents the algebra topics that you may or may not have been taught in Algebra 1. Every classroom has its limitations. Most of the time you won't reach the end of course topics, and they usually get covered in the next course as a review instead. So here is where I'm going to touch on all the topics that are shoved in at the end of Algebra 1 and may appear at Algebra 2 instead. Let's continue by talking about graphing. As a standard practice, the variable x is conventionally used to depict how far a point is moved in the horizontal direction, and the variable y is conventionally used to depict how far a point is moved in the vertical direction. You may be wondering why specifically we use the variables x and y, and the reason for that is... Anyway, if you make a graph with two variables, you end up creating a two-dimensional or 2D graph. A graph requires an axis, two of them in fact, pluralized as axes. There's a horizontal axis and a vertical axis, which will shorten to just x-axis and y-axis respectively. When graphing, we define moving to the right as positive x and left as negative x. We also define moving up as positive y and moving down as negative y. So, given this information, we know roughly where the point 1, negative 2 will fall, but we need a bit more terminology and labels. It's important to label at least what 1 in each direction looks like to give your graph some meaningful scale. Oh, there's also a different quadrant number assigned to each of the four sections of the graph, but that's not really important until you learn trigonometry. So we know how to graph points in 2D, but let's say we wanted to graph a line. Horizontal and vertical lines are easy. If I say to graph y equals 2, then the line is always raised 2 units higher than the x-axis, and is otherwise just a horizontal line. Similarly, if I say the graph x equals 3, then the line is always shifted 3 units to the right of the y-axis, and is otherwise just a vertical line. Where it gets interesting is when we'd like to make a weird line. In order to make a non-vertical, non-horizontal line, we need to describe the relationship between x and y. This relationship can be described in a number of different ways. Once you've described enough information that we know for certain what the line looks like, we can graph it. For example, if you told me any two points on the line, then we know exactly what the line looks like. If we know that 1, negative 2 and 2, 1 are both points on the same line, then we can graph this equation by plotting the two points and drawing the line between them. The most equation-friendly format of information we could be provided is the slope of the line and its y-intercept. Now, what the heck are both of those things? A slope is described in many ways. The amount of increase in y for every one increase in x. Rise over run, or to be literal, the line's steepness. A y-intercept is described as where the line touches the y-axis. A y-intercept will always exist as long as the line is not perfectly vertical. Assuming we have both of those things, we can form an equation that looks like this. y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. If I've lost you at this point, it's probably because I just wrote down four letters in a video about math. But fear not, the m and the b are not actually variables, but constants represented by a letter so that the statement can be generalized for any slope and y-intercept. If we graph the two points I described before, we can see that the y-intercept is negative 5, since the line touches the y-axis at negative 5, and the slope is 3, since the line moves 3 units up for every 1 unit it moves to the right. So the equation in slope-intercept form would be y equals 3x minus 5. You might be wondering why this is important. Well, now we can plug in any value for x and receive the corresponding value for y on the same line. The same could be done in reverse if I gave you a y value and asked you to determine the value of x that's on the line. One core practical use for this is to describe linear relationships between two things. For example, if every candy bar costs $1.50 and you pay an additional flat rate of $7 to ship any amount of candy bars to you, after your existential crisis on the ridiculous rate of inflation, you can then construct a linear equation that looks like this y equals 1.5 x plus 7, where x is the number of candy bars you order, and y is the total cost in dollars. As you might imagine, if you draw any two lines, they should intersect at some point. Asterisk. The asterisk is that the lines must not be parallel in order to intersect at exactly one point. 
Two graph lines are parallel if their slopes are both equal, but assuming the lines are not parallel, they should intersect at exactly one point. For example, if another chocolate company offered to give you chocolate for $2 per candy bar, but lowered the flat shipping cost to $3, then we've created another equation, y equals 2x plus 3. So if we wanted to see how many chocolate bars we could buy before the second deal is no longer cheaper, we could set the two equations equal to each other. So we do some quick arithmetic and show that x is equal to 8. So if we bought 8 candy bars, both deals would cost the same amount. Describing negative x values by moving to the left and negative y values by moving down is useful for when we have things that can be negative, but sometimes to calculate how far away something is from something else. Since distance is always positive, we need a method for turning any number into a positive number, whether it was originally positive or negative. Luckily, that's exactly what the absolute value symbol does. The absolute value symbol looks like two vertical lines on either side of a number and possesses the functionality of taking any number and making it positive. For example, the absolute value of negative 3 is 3 and the absolute value of 4 is 4. Let's talk about functions. Functions in concept can be thought of as a machine that we can give input and the function will spit out output. Traditionally, it replaces the vertical or y axis and is conventionally written as f. More specifically, to indicate the sort of input that the function uses, it's more often written as f in terms of its input. And if the horizontal axis is operating as our input, then the function is referred to f in terms of x, shortened to f of x. Note that the parentheses in this case does not imply multiplication, but it borrows the formatting for multiplying two variables together because, uh, I guess we ran out of symbols. Functions are uniquely different from general graphs in that for every input a function can receive, it must produce at most one output. So remember this, you can't spell function without fun. And with that groan-worthy comment, have a great day.